Before they put on the costume and assume the persona of characters who lived over 250 years ago, you have no idea what walks of life the reenactors at the feast come from. There's no better example of this than the story of the Moray family of blacksmiths at the Feast of the Hunter's Moon. A young lady came up to me and she says, Oh, I know you! And I said, Oh, I said, great, my fame is spreading, you know, as a scientist. And she said, You're the blacksmith at Port Wiatnon. <laughs> so I think I'm much better known as the blacksmith at Port Wiatnon than I'm as a, as a eminent cancer researcher, although that, <laughs> that's my day job. You might be responsible for a whole line of, of blacksmiths and everything else coming into the Feast of the Hunter's Moon. That's probably true. I actually started working in the costume booth the first two years I worked here. and they sort of, uh, My husband came along with me and then he became interested in blacksmithing. He has a whole story of his own on that. Jim, uh, how long have you been involved with the Feast of the Hunter's Moon? Uh, I think we started with the second feast. And you've been a blacksmith the entire time? The entire time. Now I understand you have some smiths in your family background. We do. My uh, grandfather was a uh, farmer blacksmith in Missouri. My father apprenticed with his father from age 16 to age 21, five-year apprenticeship, with the idea that he would take over the blacksmith shop when my grandfather retired. And the first summer that we were here, my wife was looking at the paper and she says, oh, they're having a feast of the Hunter's Moon out at Fort Wiatnon. The children will enjoy this, let's go. And lots of grass and the kids were having a great, great time. There was a weaver out here, I think. Uh, there wasn't much, just a few crafts were being demonstrated. But there was a university student in a military uniform that had a little forge set up and a little anvil and he was a little rope around. And, he was going in there, pick, 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 ting, 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 ting. And I knew he was doing it all wrong. I didn't know what he was doing, but I knew he was doing it all wrong from my watching blacksmiths, just from watching. So I said, he looks like he could use some help. Oh yeah, he said, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I stepped over the rope, and I guess I never stepped back over the rope. For us, the Feast of the Hundred Moon is our homecoming because all our kids, all our grandkids, their wives, their fiancés, and everybody converge here. And we have just, I mean, it's just a big, a big family get together. It's our Christmas time. That's when the whole family gets together because they live in Oregon, South Bend, Chicago, and different places. And now that the grandchildren are getting married, they're moving to other places as well. So this is kind of a gathering time for us. And it's very fun. They all stay at our house and we have big dinners and then we, come out here and costume and work. The blonde tall one right there, Christopher, he's a grandson. The one in the the uh, bandana over on the other on the side uh -huh. is Eric and he is also a brother of Chris's second grandchild. Uh -huh. uh, Heather is the fiance of Eric's and they're planning to get married next summer. Uh, George is not a grandson, but he's a roommate to Eric, and so he gets to come along and work. <laughs> <laughs> the one daughter is here uh, and the booth helping now. Uh, I don't know where the other one is uh -huh. at the moment. We really only come together as a family once a year. We come back in, take over my mom's house, <laughs> eat a lot of pie. That's a, that's a big thing in our family is pie. <laughs> Celebrate my dad's birthday because it's in October uh -huh. and blacksmith. My son. Jeff mm -hmm. is here, and he comes back. He's living in Oregon. He's, a, he's on the chemistry department in Corvallis. So we have another chemist out here, and he builds a forge typical of the uh, period. I build a very rustic, maybe like a kind of a forge that you would maybe build on the, on the trail or like when you're out in the field and you need to do a quick repair on your wagon or, or whatever, or you set up a military camp and you're going to do some quick forging. Maybe you, maybe you'd build something like this or maybe you wouldn't, but as you can see my lovely forge here. Basically I use firewood and mortar and, and construct this uh, very basic setup for forge for you know last about two days or so and then we move on. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, how you got involved in coming to the feast. Well we got dragged out here by our dad when we were like small children <laughs> and uh, pretty much how it all happened. And we've been coming out here ever since. And when we were young kids, maybe we didn't enjoy it, the whole blacksmithing part as much, but now as we've grown up, we've grown into it. And 
really enjoy it a lot. My three children used a, um, for 4-H, they would come down and do a project with my dad, blacksmithing, and uh, my oldest actually went to the state fair with a, um, a fireplace set that he and my dad worked on together. So. Yeah, my daughter blacksmith, she really enjoys it. She's the 14. daughter's very good. Yeah. Oh, and now we have daughter-in-laws. Um, my, uh, my son brought his wife last year, and she's actually from Bermuda, and she, was, she loved it. She <laughs> took to it. And then Tim, my sister's middle, who's really good, his fiance, Amy, is very good, and they come and do it at the steam show and help my dad. Mm -hmm. The forge in there is actually from a blacksmith shop at Williamsport which is not very far from here. Mm -hmm. It was in a, it, and, it, and it was made from Indiana brick, made probably before the, before the, in the late 1800s. And uh, that's preserved. And the bellows that we have in there is from a, a, a stagecoach stop near Odell. So it all dates back, you know, not to the time of the fort necessarily, but at least 100, 150 years. So it, it's very, very good to preserve this history. Well, yeah. actually our grandfather, did he help yeah, Dad build this shop? And, yeah. And that's he, actually he why the, the bench was built in the very first, is because our grandfather, he would uh, kind of backseat drive. <laughs> and I think uh, a couple of the ambles are actually, Yeah. one of them was my father's grandfather's anvil. So this goes back, what, five, five generations? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So. And then uh, grandpa helped dad uh, re-leather the bellows. So they bought a, the, the nice large six foot bellows in the shop. But they rebuilt all that leather together and then they put that brick forge in there. Out here officially I'm the master smith, but we have a number of master smiths who actually have their own shops but come here and, and demonstrate. Master smith owns his own place and his own tools. That's the definition, right, of a master smith. Then there were the apprentices. Apprentices were, were learners. And they'd apprentice for five years normally, and it was a, it was a like the old guild system. They were they were endured. There was no job security. I mean, they, they, the blacksmith would take on another apprentice when their apprenticeship was was filled, but he wouldn't hire them because he couldn't afford them. So he, he gave them a pair, uh, let them take with them a pair of tongs and a hammer, and then they were called journeymen because they'd go from shop to shop looking for a place where either the, the smith was about ready to retire where they could work for a while and, and try to pay for the shop and take over, or just some place where they needed an extra pair of hands. Now we have several journeymen here. I tell everybody that, okay, put your own projects on hold for the feast. What I want you to do is to make things for people that they need. Somebody will come up and say, can you make me a hook about so long with two bends in it? And I said, sure, we can do that. And I, then and I, and I know pretty much the ability of the people out here. If it's real complicated, I'll give it to one of the master smiths. If a little less complicated, I'll give it to one of the journeymen. If it's something very simple, like making a tent stake or something like that, we'll give it to one of the apprentices. I say, go over and talk to the talk to apprentice or talk to this journeyman or talk to this master smith. Tell him what you need. Mm -hmm. and, they, and then they'll sit there, and they'll sit there sometimes for an hour, if it's a complicated thing, and watch it being made. It's a tradition, and it's a, it's a wonderful tradition. We're making things, helping people, giving what they need in the old tradition. In the old tradition, it's just a wonderful feeling. For me, it's the highlight of the year, and for my family, it's the highlight of the year. And I wouldn't miss it.